Hi there, my name is Andreas Hallander. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer of Scaleout. I'm also an Associate Professor at Uppsala University. In this short video, I'd like to introduce a key idea, a key piece of technology, uh, which is at the core of what we're working with Scaleout, and that is federated machine learning. The key idea with FedML is collaborative training of machine learning models. So why is this important? Well, there are a few key problems with uh, standard centralized machine learning. Um, so typically in machine learning, you, you collect uh, data from various sources into a central location, uh, and then you use uh, high performance computing resources to construct or train such a machine learning model uh, on top of that data. However, uh, in very many situations, it's not possible to, to gather data from different sources. So data might be private, might be proprietary. Um, it might not be possible to share valuable business data with someone else. Um, it can be regulated. Uh, we have GDPR, etc. Et um, medical data, hospital data, data at hospitals, for example, where, um, where data is sensitive. Uh, it might not be possible to collect all of that data in a central location. Um, another reason is uh, fog and edge use cases where uh, data is very large, so the cost uh, of, of transferring data from its data from the location where it is created uh, to a central location is very, very high. All of these situations um, give rise to a situation where the ability to, to build a model uh, is severely restricted by access to data. And today there are no uh, great mechanisms for sharing data. Um, that respects privacy. Federated machine learning as a technology uh, is very promising to that effect. So this brings us to the key question, how more precisely can we construct machine learned models without sharing or pooling data? So this is precisely the problem that federated machine learning is attempting to solve. Uh, so in its simplest form, uh, the way you construct a model with federated learning is very straightforward. Uh, you form an alliance composing of, of members, each having access to private data. Uh, they also have the possibility or infrastructure to train models locally. Uh, a server or orchestrator or aggregator, these words are used interchangeably uh, in a lot of the literature, um, ask these clients to update a central model. Uh, clients update the model send the results back and, and this is aggregated or combined by the server into a shared model. In this way, uh, sensitive data never leaves the premise or, or the protective domain of, of the data owner. And in the same time, uh, its information encoded in the machine learning model um, is shared uh, across this alliance. So if we look at this from the perspective of privacy preservation, uh, one can say that federated learning uh, helps or deals with input privacy. It protects the integrity of the input data uh, simply by making sure that the data never leaves the data owner's premise. Um, there are many other aspects, of course, of the problem. Um, the output privacy, so sort of what can you learn about uh, the input data uh, by observing the output, in this case, case by having access to an endpoint for prediction. Um, and also what can you learn by the from the coordination of computation. So these are also important aspects. To address these, federated learning is often used together with other privacy-enhancing technologies. So differential privacy, for example, is a technique uh, in which you add controlled noise to select parts of the computational data in order to protect against inference attacks. Uh, secure multi-party computation is a frequently employed technique in this setting um, to provide secure aggregation, uh, aggregation without uh, a trusted third party seeing the data. Um, and homomorphic encryption or encryption uh, is, is frequently used to protect uh, weights, uh, updates that are sent over the network. An important point is that federated learning is not the same thing as distributed machine learning. So in distributed machine learning, uh, you also partition data, you have data partitioned over different compute clients uh, with the purpose of training a model faster by using resources in parallel. Um, in distributed learning, uh, the key assumption is that you have full control over how you distribute the data. Um, and you can also load balance computations. Uh, in federated learning, on the other hand, it is inherent to the problem that we have no control over 
data distribution amongst clients. And we, we can also expect a significant amount of system heterogeneity, uh, meaning that uh, it's, it's impossible for us to, or at least very, very, very hard, to load balance computation. Um, so for this reason, uh, our key challenge uh, in the work with federated learning algorithms is to create training schemes that are robust to this statistical and uh, system heterogeneity. So to conclude, FedML is a very promising technology to address uh, privacy-preserving machine learning. Um, it does so by, by solving the problem of input privacy, in effect, making sure uh, to train models without clients having to give up ownership of their data. Um, federated learning is, uh, uh, is full of R&D challenges. It's a very interesting topic. Um, some of the key challenges are related to performance and scalability. How do we redesign or design algorithms and frameworks that work robustly in this setting? Uh, security, how do we make the system robust to dishonest members and external threats? Um, and another one related to decentralized uh, computation and trust. So for example, is it possible to, uh, to govern alliances, um, machine learning alliances without the need of a third party trust provider? But in more general, how do you organize things such that uh, there is some sort of, of trust in alliance, how do you align incentives in an alliance. Um, so this is at the core of what we do at Scaleout. Um, and if you're interested, please reach out and we will be happy to discuss uh, these topics in depth.